Germany built a locomotive so heavy that it bent bridges, jammed turntables, and crushed its own rail lines. But instead of redesigning the engine, Germany reshaped the country around it. So why was the DRG-01 worth rebuilding an entire nation's railway for? That story begins with the locomotive at the center of it all, the DRG Class 01. This is the DRG Class 01, Germany's first standard express steam locomotive built after the formation of the Deutsche Reichsbahn in the 1920s. The Class 01 wasn't just a train, it was a symbol, Germany telling itself, we're going to stop acting like 20 separate kingdoms and start acting like one railway. But to understand why the 01 mattered so much, we need to understand the problem it was designed to fix. Before the Reichsbahn existed, Germany's railways were a patchwork of state systems. Each region, Prussia, Bavaria, Saxony, Württemberg, designed locomotives independently with their own measurements, philosophies, and traditions. Spare parts didn't match. Maintenance crews were overwhelmed, and long-distance trains felt like technological compromises stitched together across state borders. The Reichsbahn wanted to end this chaos. They needed locomotives that worked everywhere, with parts interchangeable across a national network. And the first locomotive chosen to represent this new identity, the crown jewel of the standardization project, was the Class 01. But why did this particular locomotive get the honor? And more importantly, why did it almost fail before it even entered service? The dream of the 01 began around 1924, when Germany realized it needed a fast, powerful express engine capable of hauling heavy passenger trains at 120 kilometers per hour. Earlier designs existed, but none were suited for a unified national timetable. So the Reichsbahn ordered 10 prototypes, the 01001 to 01010. These early models were impressive on paper, big wheels, big boiler, clean two-cylinder layout. But as soon as testing began, engineers faced a problem no one had considered seriously enough. The locomotive was too heavy. Its axle loads exceeded what many German bridges and turntables could safely handle. In some regions, the 01 couldn't even turn around a national locomotive that couldn't travel nationally. So what do you do when your brand new national locomotive is too heavy for the nation that built it? Engineers scrambled for solutions. Upgrading infrastructure would take years and enormous funding. Adjusting the locomotive's weight wasn't realistic without undermining the power it needed for express service. The project hovered dangerously close to becoming another great idea ruined by reality. But then something unexpected happened. Instead of scaling the locomotive down, Germany scaled its infrastructure up. Rail lines were gradually reinforced, turntables replaced, bridges strengthened. The Zero One remained the same, but the railway evolved around it. That decision signaled something new. The Reichsbahn wasn't just building locomotives, it was building a national identity. But even after the weight problem was solved, another question lingered. Could the Zero One's design philosophy really work in a country obsessed with engineering complexity? Weight wasn't the only issue slowing the Zero One. A deeper challenge lay in the locomotive's very philosophy. Germany had always leaned toward complex steam designs, four-cylinder compounds, intricate valve gear systems, mechanical innovations meant to squeeze out every last bit of efficiency. So when the Reichsbahn announced the Zero One would use just two cylinders, many designers were shocked. Why would a brand new express locomotive feel simpler than the machines it replaced? The answer was maintenance. Germany's old regional engines were engineering marvels, but they were nightmares to repair. Compounds required meticulous tuning, specialized parts had to be ordered from different manufacturers. And when locomotives cross state borders, crew knowledge didn't always transfer. The Zero One was meant to solve all that. It didn't chase theoretical efficiency, it chased reliability, standard parts, easy repair, and predictable performance. A locomotive that could start its day in Hamburg and end it in Munich without anyone needing a special manual. But did this simplicity make it weak, slow, outdated? Not at all. With 1,850 horsepower and massive 1.85 meter driving wheels, the Zero One could maintain high speeds with ease. Its boiler produced steam generously, its frame handled heavy express loads, and its running gear, with careful balancing, performed smoothly even above 120 kilometers per hour. Yet critics remained skeptical. Germany still loved complexity. Even the famed Bavarian S3-6, one of the most elegant locomotives ever built, used a four-cylinder compound layout. The Zero One looked plain by comparison. So what changed public perception? 
Performance. Once the first batch of production locomotives rolled out in the early 1930s, the Zero One proved itself spectacularly. On long routes like Berlin-Hamburg and Berlin-Munich, it hauled heavy trains with confidence. Drivers praised its smoothness at speed. Firemen appreciated its accessible firebox. Workshops welcomed its standardized parts. Suddenly, the locomotive everyone expected to be too simple became the locomotive everyone wanted to operate. But simplicity wasn't the only reason the Zero One succeeded. Something else was happening, something bigger, more political, more symbolic. The O-1 wasn't just a machine, it was becoming Germany's unofficial mascot of modernization. But if the O-1 was becoming a national symbol, what hidden weakness threatened to slow it down? By the mid-1930s, Germany realized something important. The Zero One was excellent, but not perfect. Its long, rigid wheelbase struggled on tight curves, limiting where it could run. So engineers introduced a solution, the Krauss Helmholtz truck, a clever mechanism that allowed the leading axle to guide the locomotive more gracefully. This upgrade marked a turning point. It meant the O-1 could finally operate on more demanding routes in southern and eastern Germany. Workshop crews saw fewer maintenance issues. Drivers noticed smoother handling through mountainous terrain. With that obstacle cleared, the O-1 wasn't just a capable engine anymore. It was a national workhorse, ready to take on nearly every major express line Germany had. But once the one mastered the network, what did Germany want next? The Reichsbahn was never satisfied. Express traffic grew heavier, and Germany wanted even faster, more glamorous trains. So in 1939, they introduced the streamlined sister locomotive, the O1.10, sleeker, more powerful, and equipped with three cylinders. The O1.10 was marketed as the future of German steam. Long shrouds wrapped around its boiler, its aerodynamic nose hinted at modernity. The idea was clear. Germany wanted to compete with Britain's A4 Pacifics and America's streamliner movement. But then came the twist. The streamlining looked stylish but made maintenance a headache. War shortages made repairs even harder. And ultimately, many 1.10 locomotives had their sleek casings removed. The original Zero One simpler design once doubted, aged far better. So if the Zero 1.1 stumbled, how did the original Zero One rise even higher? The original Zero One powered ahead. During the late 1930s, it became the backbone of Germany's high-speed express network. Trains like the D-Suga relied on its speed and endurance. Drivers often pushed the Zero One beyond its official limits, exceeding 130 kilometers per hour on favorable stretches. The locomotive handled it with calm confidence. Wartime, however, brought harsh conditions. Maintenance windows shrank, coal quality dropped, rail lines suffered bomb damage. The one worked under pressure no designer had imagined. Some suffered frame cracks, others ran with worn bearings, yet they kept operating, carrying troops, refugees, and essential supplies. In those years, the O-1 wasn't just a locomotive, it was a lifeline. But what happened to a locomotive built for unity when the nation itself was split in two? After 1945, Germany split in two, and the Zero One split with it. Engines built to unite a country were divided overnight, scattered between East and West. The locomotive created for a single national network now belonged to two rival systems trying to rebuild from the same ruins. In the West, the Bundesbahn modernized their Zeros Ones with welded boilers, better brakes, and new long-range tenders. Efficiency became the priority. In the East, the Reichsbahn took a bolder path. They didn't upgrade the O-1, they reinvented it. Their rebuild program created the 015 series with new boilers, improved cabs, and a sharper, more modern profile. Two Germanys, two rebuilds, one legendary locomotive. How did a locomotive designed in the 1920s stay relevant in the jet age? Versatility, a strong frame, a big boiler, and simple mechanics allowed the Zero One to evolve endlessly. Both East and West pushed that potential to its limit. As trains grew heavier in the 1960s and 70s, the question arose again, could the Zero One still keep up? Surprisingly, yes. Rebuilt Zero One S delivered speeds and reliability that challenged newer locomotives. Their large driving wheels and steady boilers made them ideal for long, fast runs. Eventually, inevitability arrived. Diesel and electric power were cleaner, cheaper, and politically favored. West German Zero Ones bowed out in the 1970s. East German rebuilds lasted into the 1980s and early 1990s. Extraordinary longevity for a pre-war design. So what do you think? Was the DRG-01 Germany's greatest steam locomotive or simply the right machine at the right moment? Let us know in the comments. The debate still isn't settled. And if you enjoyed this story, subscribe for more deep dives into the machines that shaped our world.